Welcome to this BBB industry segment on magnetism. Magnetism, starters, alternators. That's how they work. Let's go learn about it. Magnetism, I know what you're thinking. Boring physics class, not the case here. Our Chevy Volt runs off of magnetism. And there's all sorts of auto parts that work off magnetism, such as door lock solenoid, injectors, wheel speed sensors, trigger devices, coils, and even crankshaft position sensors. And don't forget about starters and alternators. Starters use the theory of magnetism to turn. That's exactly how they work. Now, electricity and magnetism, that goes hand in hand, hence the term electromagnetism. Our electrical fundamentals video, if you need a refresher, it's only a click back. And we're gonna take apart some starters and alternators to show you how magnetism works. Yeah, and understanding how it works will sure help you diagnose it. No matter what's going on with the system, magnetism drives both these components. We also have a lot of demonstrators to show you how magnetism works. Yeah, and they're cool demonstrators. No time like the present. Let's look at them. Quick review on voltage, resistance, and amperage. Now voltage, that was pressure, electromotive force. Then we had resistors. Resistors was the opposition to current flow, resistance. Then we dealt with current, amperage. That's my magnetism. That's my electric flow through that wire. Anytime current's flowing, you're gonna have some electromagnetism through that wire. And just like these magnets, unlike chargers attract. Light chargers repel each other. They don't want to stay together. They're going to fight each other just like a starter motor. That's exactly how a starter motor works. We have some poles in here, north to north. At the same time, the armature is going to be hitting south to south, and it's going to push, 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 and push. But before we go into the starter motor, we need to know a little bit about electromagnetic induction, Faraday's law. There's some lines of flux we have to understand, and we can do that with this magnet. What's happened is I have a north and a south pole. Now those magnetic lines of flux are traveling from the north to the south pole. They're traveling in a straight line. Now, if we interrupt those lines, we can actually induce some voltage. Wheel speed sensors, Hall effect switches, alternators. This is the principle of it. Faraday's law, what we did is we hooked up a wire to a meter. We actually put it on AC voltage or amperage, excuse me, AC amperage. And what's gonna happen is he goes through there, it's gonna cut that field. Now, because it's a complete circuit, through the meter from all the way around, we're gonna induce electromotive force. That's what's going into the wire. But that electromotive force, remember, is pressure. So the pressure is gonna cause the electrons to flow around that wire, and we're gonna count them. So cut that wire. He's not hitting anything, and he's producing voltage. Now go faster. There you go. Well, he can produce voltage just like that. Amperage, they're running through electromotive induction, electromotive force. That's what's happening there. It's cutting into that wire. Now, we take it one step further. We got those magnetic repulsion here going from north to south. Those waves, those flux lines are traveling in a straight line. Flux lines can't interact with each other. They can't touch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a lines of flux into this wire, okay? Now, Fleming's left-hand rule says that those wires is gonna oppose each other. So what happens is if I start to send current around there, if he does it, it's gonna push that wire back, and what happens is right through there, there's magnetic induction of those lines of flux. It's pushing, it's pushing to the north to the south pole. Now go the other way, and it pushes that magnet out. Nothing's pushing that magnet out except the two interactions of the lines of flux. This one has a circular lines of flux, and you can't see them, but it's disturbing that north to south pole. Our starter motor, north to north, south to south, disturbance of interactions of those fluxes. We'll take a simple motor and we'll take it a little bit further. Now you got to saw the basics of magnetism and how it works. Now let's apply it to a starter motor, an actual motor. On this motor here, this is a simple motor, kind of a one winding deal, just one armature going through here. Now this motor is not gonna work in constant motion because we don't have multiple things. But before we look at that, if you would take apart the starter for us, we already took some bolts out. I'll take the solenoid off. If you take apart that starter, we'll be able to look at all the armature components and how it applies to this simple motor illustration. All right. All right. Now the simple motor, we said earlier that the travels from the north to the south, those magnetic lines of flux. Now as those magnetic lines of flux pass from the north to south, 
we energize the field over here. This is the commentator. This would be the armature segments. And what happens is as we get around to where it would start to attract, we break the field. Once we break the field, momentum is going to push that magnet around and keep it moving. North to north, south to south. You get that constant push, push, push around. And we can demonstrate that here. Chase, if you'd hook this up for me, we'll go to this little simple motor illustration. And what that does is we have two split commentators right down here. This is split. So what's happening is if we start it right here, nothing's going to happen. It's not going to move because it's a simple motor. But if I come over and I separate it there and I hit it, it's going to spin. Now why it continues to spin is simply momentum. We have momentum to get us past to break that circuit to keep it moving. That's how DC motors operate. Now a starter motor, a little more complex. What we do with a starter motor is we take a commentator here and we feed multiple segments into the armature. Now these are wound to get the maximum interaction of magnetic flux. Some of these are connected to each other, they go around as north approaches north, south approaching south, and it's spinning around and around and around. Now this one here is a little bit bigger than that one. This is a permanent magnet starter. This is a little bit different. So if you take that apart, we can show the difference between them. This one here is a field coil. Now the field coil starter has these pole shoes and the field coils that wrap around there. So what we're doing is we're strengthening the magnetic field in two places. We're energizing this armature with voltage and we're energizing this field coil. As we do that, the interaction from the magnetic flux lines go faster and faster and faster and it spins. Now this Solenoid here works in the same concept. This is a windings. There's pull-in windings and there's hold-in windings. Now the pull-in windings and the hold-in windings act together and create a magnetic field. Once they create a magnetic field, it's going to do two things. It's going to push the plunger out. That's going to start your car in contact with your flywheel. And it also transfers the power from this side here to the other side. We send that power into the commentator. The commentator energizes the armature and around it goes. It starts to spin. Just about got it. All right. This one here, same solenoid. Same thing, same concept. Hold in windings, pull in windings, magnetic interjection as it goes. It induces a voltage and pushes it through with magnetic field. Now this one's really cool. This is a permanent magnet starter. This is a little bit smaller and this permanent magnet starter, you gonna pull the armature out of that, yeah has gear reduction. Why it has gear reduction is because obviously it's not as big as this field coil starter, not near as big, and we don't energize the magnets. Well, if we don't energize the magnets, we're really not gonna get the force of those magnetic flux lines in order to get it to push and start a car. So what we do is we take a little bit less amperage and we use a term called gear reduction. And this is a good look of a gear reduction starter. Just like the solar system, we got the planets in here spinning around a gear reduction right here. And what's happening, this is the ring and these are the little planets. And I introduced this armature assembly, which is the sun gear. I put it in there and what that does is it actually, the armature spins. You can see I'm spinning the armature at about three, four, five times the rate. I'd have to count it, but that pinion's spinning a lot slower. What's that doing? It's developing torque. That's a torque starter motor, a high torque starter motor, a little bit different between the two, but the theory's still the same. Now we can do a couple things to increase those magnetic lines of flux. I said earlier, we can go ahead and magnetize the magnets. We can put some uh, field coils in there and electrify them, that does it. We also can bring the field closer to the armature. This guy's real close to him. And when he's close to him, he's creating that magnetic lines of flux to push him around that way. And we can get it with put more power to the armature too, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna kinda conserve power in that. These are great starters. If you look at these laminations here, conserving energy, laminations are there for dissipating heat. That's a nice product. The two starters, if you look at these two starters, your starter, oh, this is your starter. You get the field coil. I got the permanent magnet, all right? So if you look at yours, what are you drawing? I'm drawing about uh, 60 amps. 60 amps, yeah, and your torque is gonna be about? 16 newton meters. 16 newton meters of torque at 60 amps. Now that's the big guy, okay? That's taking a little more amperage to power up those field coils, all right? Now mine, on the other hand, mine's doing about 40 at about 18 Newton meters. So I'm not taking much amps and I'm developing more torque. Lighter weight, good for gas mileage, 
These are neat. These put in every one of the boxes. You get to see actually these starters are tested. They're proven. It's an awesome product. Now that you've seen how a starter works, let's move on and see how an alternator works. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one apart and you just tell them what's going on. Yeah, the theory of an alternator is similar to a starter. We're just gonna swap it around a little bit. On our starter motor, we had these commutators. Now on our commutators, when I spin that, we broke the field and we made a DC voltage. Now on the alternator, a little bit different. There were slip rings back here and we're gonna use this as a rotor and this is a stator. So as that rotor spins around, he induces voltage into the stator and that's how we make voltage, pressure. Now this animation is a good look at that. Our rotor spinning around on the inside, those magnetic lines of flux, we're energizing that rotor and what we're doing is we're inducing voltage into the stator. Now we have a rotor assembly. Now this rotor assembly is a huge electromagnet. These are claw poles and inside is a field winding. So if we go in with field voltage, we're taking it inside, that's how we regulate an alternator. Depending on how much voltage goes into this is going to depend on how much electromagnetic induction happens and what comes out. So if you take that and you energize that, you'll see right now the magnet's not going to stick or the socket's not going to stick because it's not a magnet. But once he hits that terminal there, it's a huge electromagnet, take it off and there it goes, okay? So that electromagnet causes that voltage to get induced into this stator. The stator has three phases of windings. We take those windings, we feed them to a diode. This is a diode trio. That's exactly what this is, and it's in a rectifier assembly. What that does is that takes the voltage in, and they're one-way check valves, and it rectifies it from an AC voltage to a DC voltage, and out comes the DC voltage. Same principle, same look at it, different components, but still using electromagnetism. Now inside your alternator box, you'll get one of these cards. And what that tells you that what the different amperages is at the different ratings, that's gonna depend on the field voltage, what's coming out, bigger stator, bigger rotor, more voltage, more amperage, more output, okay? That was a good look at starters, alternators. I hope this helps you to diagnose these systems. See it clearly in your mind. We got to see magnetism as it applies to starters and alternators and all different types of electrical components. No matter what component you're working on, understanding the theory of magnetism is the key. It pushes motors, induces voltage into alternators, solenoids, all types of electrical systems on a car that get millions from point A to point B. Now BBB products are preferred by the professional installer because they understand the importance of magnetism. They build and manufacture starters and alternators that meet or exceed OEM specifications. And for more information on electrical and troubleshooting problems, log on to BBBIND.com. And there you'll find troubleshooting tips, wire diagram for the entire vehicle, free TSBs, all kinds of tips, and much more. Thanks for watching.